Where were you in 1992? Well, I was working at the European Commission as the chef de cabinet to the competition commissioner. What are the three main challenges facing parties at Rio Plus 20? I think the first big challenge is that the world has moved on and become a bigger and to some extent more dangerous place. Uh, the second big challenge, I think, is that to do justice to the complexity of the agenda you really do need proper preparation. And the third thing is that when you get to the conference itself, there has to be a real commitment and a real political will to make things happen. What are your expectations for Rio Plus 20? My expectations are that the combination of the birth of the nine billionth human being on this planet and the global meltdown in the economy, if you like. Uh, combine those two, and with a bit of luck, we will get a good result, a positive result, and one that combines vision with specific commitments to do things and targeted uh, in different areas. Since the initial Rio conference in 92, how has industry responded to the challenge of the green economy and sustainable development? I think the report card is a mixed one. On the one hand, on the plus side, there has been the growth of a lot of new industry, uh, environmental industries if you like, on the back of environmental regulation. The other side of the coin, however, is that uh, a lot of industry has got stuck. Stuck as if resources are in plentiful supply and they're not. Stuck uh, in a context as if they don't need to invest a going forward to make things happen in and, and in preparation for a new world. That is wrong. They have to move forward. What advice would you give to industry in the run-up to Rio Plus 20? I would say to them that they need to take their own responsibilities. Governments for the next 10 years, uh, in the West particularly, are going to have a lot less money. Uh, there is a tremendous responsibility now on industry to try to get its own house in order, to commit itself to a world of scarce resources but also a world of opportunities, opportunities for investment, opportunities for new technology, and that I think must be tremendously exciting for a lot of captains of industry. Do you think Rio Plus 20 will suffer from the current crisis, or will it be an opportunity to get positive momentum for a sustainable path? I think it may suffer, particularly at the beginning, and in preparation for the conference because there really is so much pessimism around at the moment. But by the time we get to that conference, we really must have worked through that pessimism. We must have got beyond that pessimism and we must get to a point where people are looking at this as a big opportunity to change the world literally. What is your message to the Commission, the Council and the European Parliament on Rio Plus 20? Well, I think when I look at some of the papers that have been produced, on the one hand, I think the Parliament paper has been extremely good uh, as a preparation document. Some of the other papers I find a little bit lacking in focus. And this agenda is so wide, it's so broad, it's so complex. This all has to be boiled down by the EU delegation in advance of the conference as to a number of very specific, very clear targets in areas such as resource utilisation. What do we do about poverty? We need a new development agenda for this world if it is going to be a successful conference because the different parties, be they developed countries, be they developing countries, be they underdeveloped countries, are all coming from this with separate agendas. And that is a fantastic challenge, but it's one 
which is going to demand a lot of hard work from the EU institutions.